Hey everyone, James Rath here. So today I have a special video with a special guest. This is Ben uh, Shogler from, what's the company called? Uh, it was called Skoog. Uh, Skoog. Skoog Music. Okay, Skoog Music. And their product happens to be the same name, Skoog, correct? Absolutely. All right, and if you could just tell me a little bit about what this is that, that is in front of us. It's, it's a cube-like object with circular pushy buttons that, that, that kind of pop out. So it's a it's a musical instrument created specifically for kids. Okay. Uh, and our original kind of it came out of a project to create an instrument to help include kids with disabilities mm -hmm. in orchestras and music making in general. And then from there we've grown we've sort of grown in focus to we really want to we really want to open up music making to everyone, sure. but with a particular focus on people who maybe can't use traditional instruments because sure. they're complicated and they can be quite mm -hmm. difficult to use. So. We spent started in 2006 actually in the research, doing you know working in schools and trying to think you know how can how can we open up music to to people who maybe can't access it via traditional means and and now we're here nice. uh, in sunny California with this little squishy fellow which is a a wireless music making device that works with the iPad. With this, what kind of disabilities did you have in mind? Um, when we to cover when we started off, it was we were working a lot in the area of kind of profound and multiple mm -hmm. disabilities. So sensory processing disabilities, uh, physical disabilities, learning difficulties. Um, and our, our kind of the challenge was to try and create something that would cover not just, you know, one particular area, but sure. actually trying to cover off as many things as possible. And so it, it, it addresses two key aspects of um, accessibility in music making. One is the physical skill needed to play the traditional instruments, sure. and the other is the kind of learning kind of challenge and knowledge challenge around knowing, you know, how the system works with notes and how to read music and those kind of things. So it, it works on both those levels. What got you interested in, in creating a product like this? What's um, your background? I'm a, a developmental psychologist okay. and a musician. And my partner, David, he's a physicist and a musician. Mm -hmm. And we're both parents, but we, we uh, were part of a, a long-standing project in the University of Edinburgh that had been looking at education and music and, 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 ha and how we learn and how that can then help in like music therapy. Sure. And it became very apparent, and this was sort of in, actually in the late 90s, that you know, music has such a profound impact on everyone's lives and really it should be part of everyone's education and upbringing and we all should be doing more of it. But when the instruments are a challenge and a barrier, that's a problem. So there was this movement to try and make a new in instrument for kids and specifically that would include kids with disabilities. And so we were around the university at that time and that's, that's where our kind of research was leading. And so it just kind of naturally grew fr from what we were doing there. Yeah. And uh, when we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to actually make a make a product, which was amazing, it was funded by a group called Nesto, which is in the UK, which is a national endowment for science, technology, and the arts. And they, they you know, we put a, put the idea to them, and they went, oh, okay, we'll we'll help you try and do this. Nice. And the the really amazing thing was that they, they said that, but they all said, but what you have to do is you have to go out and be embedded in schools and places like that mm -hmm. where your potential users are going to be. So special needs schools and hospitals and places. So we did that and we spent two years working with kids, working with teachers, working with music therapists to try and you know, get to the bottom of things and, and create something that would be useful. And we ended up with this, a Skoog, which is a, a squeezy cube like this. <laughs> and we, yeah, I'll show how it works in a bit. Yeah, it's very squeezy yeah. <laughs> or squishy. Let's, let's try it out. Should we try it out? Yeah, okay, I would so love to. It's, uh, Bluetooth, I mean, actually one thing that's, maybe you can hold it, mm. if you feel the bottom of it, James, there's, under one bit, there's a little dotted kind of marker. Yeah. Under the, it's on, on this side here. Oh, right here? Feel, I think I feel it. On, no, that's the button on this. Oh, the button. On, on that one there. See that? that oh. You feel that? Yeah. That's so that uh, if you have low vision that you can know which side, how it's oriented. Okay. Because you see from the video, each side is a different color. Yeah. So the way that it works is we set it up, it, you choose it to be an instrument sound and then you have a different note a sound to each side. So you need to be able to know which side is where. Mm. So if you don't, so for people with sight, there's color indication, but if you don't, then you have this marker on the bottom so that when you're holding it, you always know that's, that marker is always under the yellow. Okay. And so whenever you hold it, you can actually orient it so that you know which side is facing where. Cool. So if we turn it on now, there's this little button underneath here and that just pops the Bluetooth on. There we go. And then on the iPad, I just 
Okay. Connect it up. Lights up blue. Yeah. Right in the front. And if you just pop them down on the table, so it, it needs to calibrate when it connects. Okay. So it needs to know what, that it's not being what not being touched is, so that it can tell what being touched is, if you like. And it's got a sp specific app for the Scoog, right? Yeah, it's just the Scoog app. It's free okay. on on the App Store. And uh, now, if we you can just give this a, 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 a press. Yeah. Okay, so you can also feel how much pressure yeah. is. So if, if you, a good way to hold it is with two hands. Two hands. And then you can play with your thumbs and your fingers, so you can actually play. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a different note on each side, mm -hmm. and it's we can change the sensitivity, we can change the way that the kind of sides respond, and it's also it's actually sensitive sort of everywhere as you were kind of discovering. So the, the flat parts in the corners and these things, and that opens up to be played in different ways. And depending on the sound you've got, if you want to do a kind of tapping, then you maybe want a more percussive sound, and we can set that up and choose it. Okay. So in the app, you can choose different instrument sounds. So we could we could say put a little string sound on there or and we can change the notes that it uses and what it does is it uses different scales so this is a and we can change that to be a different one so that's us making sounds and these scales that it uses if you can find the right scale for a piece of music then you can play with it okay. so what the app actually does I'm going to switch back to the sort of synthy sound. What the app actually does is it'll automatically integrate with your iTunes library, and it, any tune you have in there, it, it can tune automatically. So it'll set the notes automatically. So that helps deal with the learning kind of challenge or having to read music where you're like, well, I don't know what notes to use. It's like, well, yeah. we can tune it to give you the right notes. So I can just pull something up here, search in my. So I'm just typing the name of an artist here. We can do that. And then you select the track, hit play, and you see on the screen it says it says B flat minor, and that means that and then each each side makes a different sound or a different note. So a different note. Okay. Yeah. So and yeah. So yeah. You can hear that. Yeah. And it just frees it frees people up to be able to really kind of play with music and especially for, for kids and younger users yeah. so without having to have a level of instrumental skill they have to actually get to play with music and play around with rhythm and play mm -hmm. around with being expressive and and interacting with the music that they love you know so you're able to actually jam along with Pearl Jam or yeah. you know play with Snoop Dogg whatever it is <laughs> whatever it is you're into you can kind of start kind of playing with and that you know opens up that idea and, and it also integrates with GarageBand which is really neat. Okay and the, what about um does it work on Mac as well? Yes uh, uh, it works as an uh, uh, a Mac, Mac OS it'll it can go run into Logic or run into GarageBand okay. as a, a wireless uh, Bluetooth MIDI controller yeah. which is what this this one is it's kind of a squishy wireless MIDI controller that then Sweet. combines with the apps built to um, we also we also have a Swift Playground okay. uh, so yeah. for learning coding yeah. So it's a playground based around how to sort of create an electronic musical instrument using this as, as the interface, and that cool. works with Apple Swift Playgrounds. Uh, and we're working on a, a, a couple of games ourselves, and and some other interaction as well. You know, with the, with some other things we're hoping to launch later in the, in, in sure. the year. But uh, at the moment, it's Skoog and you know, works with GarageBand and other music apps. Yeah. And then on the game side, as a controller, we you know we're interested in exploring new things. Absolutely. Um, and then, what do you have feature-wise within the app itself? So in the app, you can connect your your Scoog. Yeah. You can, so we show that it can yeah. work with iTunes um, yeah. or at least your music library. Yeah. Um, you can set the scales. You can also set the notes. You don't you don't have to be fixed in these scales. Now, so the okay. scales kind of keep it nice and regular. But you can set the notes to be anything you want. So you you can create your own scales, or if you wanted to make a particular melody yourself. Okay. <laughs> Kind of an odd one, but you know, <laughs> sure. it, it, it's free. You know, yeah. I, I can do that. So you can set the notes. There are a, a, some instruments in the app which you can change. But you, the, the best thing to do, instrument-wise, is actually to go into GarageBand and link it to GarageBand. And it's as easy as just opening GarageBand, and you should already mm -hmm. be there. 
and that gives you access to hundreds of, of sounds, with, particularly with the new alchemy synths that they've, they, they, so there's like a, it's a guitar now. There's also an option for actually changing the notes using the screen. So if you prefer to work by ear, instead of, so you can say, well, I want the red note to be, um, let's put the audio on here, wait a minute. So the app can also work separate, to my understanding, um, from the actual yeah, instrument. The, yeah, mm -hmm. you can actually play the screen. Okay. So um, it doesn't allow you to do as much, Sure. But, but you can use the app. So here we could actually say, well, on the red note I want, that way you can preview things ahead yeah. of time, um, that and, or if you're interested in this product itself, you can yeah. download the app, kind of get familiar with yeah. you know what the layout would be, and okay. yeah, that kind of thing. Nice. Um, other things you can do are set the sensitivity, change the way you know the, the sides work, and mm -hmm. the response, and the control, and that kind of stuff. Well, thank you so much. Um, where can people buy the Skoog, or how much does it retail for? So Skoog retails for $299, mm -hmm. and it's available online at the Apple Store, or in selected Apple retail stores uh, in, in the US, and worldwide, actually. Awesome. Well, thank you, Benjamin. I really appreciate it. It's, this is really, really fun. I'm not big in, like, I, I don't know instruments. I don't know anything about uh, telling music or, or reading music, but I think something like this could actually even for someone at my age can be beneficial and, and being a great gateway into you know finding a passion for music or, or a hobby or something so yeah. or even just having fun with it you know? yeah, I think one of the things that we're really passionate about is everyone should have that experience that joy of being able to kind of be a part of music and mm -hmm. create something and that doesn't matter how old you are or, or where you're from it's just about having fun Lastly, how can someone who wants to get their hands on the Skoog to try it out, how can they go about doing that? Well, in every Apple store in the world, they are offering Skoog field trips. So you can go online, book a field trip at your local Apple store, and get your hands on a Skoog, and the team there will help you get your Skoog on. Awesome, thank you.